Whereas if you embrace a different path and you go for fasting, because ultimately what you're seeking is DMT, diamethyltryptamine. Now, if you're seeking this in your psychedelics, it's actually what it's doing is forcing you into your pineal gland. It's forcing you into the face in the Bible where Jacob saw God face to face, the, the place he calls pineal. This is what it says inside the Bible. It's not spelled the same, but it's very clear what they're talking about, considering all of the aspects of religion on the planet say that you communicate with God via the pineal gland. So when you seek this DMT, and for instance, ayahuasca, ayahuasca is a combination of two plants, and one of the plants allows your body to actually digest it. Normally it wouldn't happen. And it's the combination that allows it to happen. So when you seek that, you're seeking stimulation of your pineal. If you go into a long water fast, you are going to get into a much deeper space because what will happen first and foremost, you're going to find dominion over the very lowest aspect of your animal nature, which is your appetite for sex and your appetite for food. The two hardest things for a human being to discipline. Weapons always close to end. Hey guys, I am still here in Hamburg, which means that I have these this hotel room as my background, which is a bit cut off for me. I'm used to hearing crickets chirping and birds singing and seeing the sun setting over my shoulder on Mount Meru and Mount Kilimanjaro. And I'm used to seeing the odd piece of African wildlife walking past my home. I'm in Hamburg and unfortunately I'm confined to a hotel room, but it does mean that I can read my comments and because I can read my comments, I saw a lot speaking about psychedelics and I thought I'd speak about this topic because I see someone said to me that psychedelics is probably a deeper experience than fasting. And I think there's a problem inside our modern day understanding of the use of psychedelics for spiritual practice. And I don't want to get deep into it because I'm planning to do a deep video about the use of psychedelics in spiritual practice in different cultures around the planet and different modern religions as well, arguably right up until some of the uh, desert fathers within inside Coptic Christianity. And uh, even over to Hinduism and certain aspects of Buddhism as well and of course all forms of shamanism and those in Europe, uh, those of any sort of Viking descent which is pagan in its origin, they were all using these psychedelics, some to positive benefits, some to negative benefits, South America as well, so on and so forth. But what I want to talk about is inside our modern day society, the duality in, of the process of psychedelics and fasting and, for instance, shamanic breathing and meditation. So they all sound like they should go hand in hand, actually, and maybe they should on occasion. But psychedelics and natural psychedelics that, that Mother Earth provides for us, such as uh, mushrooms and uh, such as things like ayahuasca, then we can see these as teachers, as healers. And I absolutely agree that plants can teach. 100% there's a profound aspect to the consciousness of plants that can teach us. And I learned this whilst stilling myself as best I could in a forest. And all I did was I realized I was tuning into the same space in my consciousness that the tree beside me was in. And that sounds a little bit like it's in Hippieville for some people. But what I mean is a tree simply grows without any childish thoughts about what is right, what is wrong. It has no childish thoughts about, am I growing fast enough? Am I growing better than the tree next to me? It just does with all its might what it's supposed to do. And I tuned into a space in consciousness where I started to think to myself, do I actually tune into that space as well? Am I ever doing what I'm supposed to do to my fullest or are my childish thoughts always slowing me down? And I noticed then most of the time my childish thoughts were slowing me down of wondering about others, what do people think of me, so on and so forth. And I was taught 
by the presence of a tree on that day it didn't connect with me perhaps it did through the ground energetically but it didn't connect with me as then they ingested it but that is how I realized that plants can be teachers and of course then by ingesting them that same teaching to them can be passed on. Now when you look at psychedelics and the problem I see inside our modern world. First of all, psychedelics can heal people. I've seen it. I've seen people, I know people, I'm friends with people who regularly do ayahuasca ceremonies to get guidance from spirit or from mother ayahuasca as they call it. But others, they do it just to get a real tangible grip on an experience inside another aspect of reality, which is the divine side of reality. And they get a direct experience, which to them is heavenly. And some people need that. This is what's often missing from the world is a direct experience with something heavenly, a direct experience with God leaves you not needing any faith. It also leaves you with very little fear because once you have a direct experience with a powerful, all loving God and you know, without having to have faith, you know, just as you know, I'm talking to you now, you know that clearly as I know that God is there for me so clearly I need no faith because I know it. I don't believe in God. I know God, as Carl Jung once said. This is exactly how it feels for I. Now, because I've had direct experiences with God, I require no faith, as I say. And because I require no faith in God, it gives me a very strong relationship with God where I don't fear evil. I don't fear darkness because I know if there is a loving almighty God and I do know there's a loving almighty God, he has got my back. And thus I give no space for fear because thoughts about fear only give strength to fear. And thus it's the same for evil. Thoughts about evil only give strength to evil. Darkness and evil is nothing but a lack of light and a lack of God's presence. It's as simple as that. So if you bring God's presence into any situation, the same as if you put a light on in a dark room, the, the dark must flee. And thus the evil must flee as well. Or it must get on its knees and get out of the way. And this is how... Having a direct experience can help people because it can liberate them and it can build them to the point where they have absolute trust and a, a unity with God that they need. This is the benefit of psychedelics plus the healing aspect of it. God can actually, when you come away from your carnal mind, your thinking mind, the monkey mind as Buddhists call it, he can actually speak to you. Prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening to God. Now, when your mind is in the way, you can't get the messages to you. And there are countless thousands of testimonies from people who needed healing from childhood abuse, who needed healing from addiction, who needed healing from uh, traumas in their life. And they get into <clears throat> psychedelic ceremonies with someone who's leading them and guiding them. And God reaches in there and takes out this damaged aspect of their subconscious. And this helps to heal them. They get a presence from God, something divine. Because the carnal mind is shut down, it's gone. The five senses are dead. And this is something that is asked for by Buddhism, it's asked for by Krishna, it's asked for by Jesus as well. Take no thought for your life. And this is why the Coptic Christians <clears throat> used to use the used to use the Jesus prayer. They just still to this day, the Desert Fathers, some of the oldest practicing Christians on earth, they sit in caves repetitively using a mantra, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. They say it over, that is their life. They say it over and over and over again. And because they say it over and over and over again, they take no thought for their life and they get a direct experience with God without labels, without uh, constructs, without words, they get an experience beyond there, beyond descriptions, words, construct, images. They get an, a physical experience, a non-linear experience of God. And this is what psychedelics do for people. And I don't know enough about, I've not held ayahuasca ceremonies for people, etc. So I don't know enough about whether or not it can heal everybody. But what I do know is that there's a negative aspect to it. And this is why I say fasting tops out over this and breath work tops out over this. Because you can take somebody who is filled with fear and is concerned constantly with evil and scared of things like their own anatomy. Some people are scared of Kundalini inside Christianity because they 
uh, confuse it between the two negative energies described inside uh, Eastern mysticism of the Kunda buffer, the negative serpent, and the Kundalini, the positive serpent, represented in Christian texts in the story of Moses where the serpents are biting them and they're dying and only if they look upon the serpent, golden serpent coiled around the staff which is still used for uh, the me medical industries today as a he sign of healing can they receive the healing. It's only when you look to the, the true energy which is not actually a serpent, it's just a representation of the energy moving through your energy centers in your body. It's just a representation of being uh, clean basically in your deeds, in your actions, in your thoughts and in your heart. So when we have fear and uh, evil has a presence in our lives because we're always concerned about it and we take such a thing, then we could, we could run into a lot of trouble because you open yourself up to other dimensions and you must believe that inside these other dimensions that there are positive and negative just as there is positive and negative here. I've said it before that reality, if it were just a, f a white room and a flat white line, this would be a world without evil, without dark, without pain, without suffering. And it's sitting in a white room in a flat white line, you wouldn't know what was going on, you wouldn't know to be grateful for it, you wouldn't know if it felt good or not because you'd have no comparison. And the elements of pain that we feel breaks up that flat white line. And it's like the gaps between a musical note that creates the music. The experience of life that God created with inside our paradigms of our reality require those gaps. But if you are focused on those gaps and you are fearful of them, then I see a huge problem in that because you're going to expose yourself to things that you might not have correct control over. If you're an addict and so on and so forth, it might be able that you can reach through and get the right thing. But if your whole mindset is focused in the wrong way, if you're a self-serving you know, and you're bordering on evil with inside your actions, not to, who's to judge what evil is, as they say, but if someone is purely about self-service and greed, and it doesn't mean that they are an evil person, it might mean they've just taken the wrong path in life because they've been hurt when they were younger or being taught that, then a psychedelic experience might lead them to possibly the wrong areas of energy. And we hear about these testimonies of people of what they call their demons overcoming them because they have too many. Whereas if you embrace a different path and you go for fasting, because ultimately what you're seeking is DMT, diamethyltryptamine. Now, if you're seeking this in your psychedelics, it's actually what it's doing is forcing you into your pineal gland. It's forcing you into the face in the Bible where Jacob saw God face to face, the, the place he calls pineal. This is what it says inside the Bible. It's not spelled the same, but it's very clear what they're talking about, considering all of the aspects of religion on the planet say that you communicate with God via the pineal gland. So when you seek this DMT, and for instance, ayahuasca, ayahuasca is a combination of two plants, and one of the plants allows your body to actually digest it. Normally it wouldn't happen. And it's the combination that allows it to happen. So when you seek that, you're seeking stimulation of your pineal. If you go into a long water fast, you are going to get into a much deeper space because what will happen first and foremost, you're going to find dominion over the very lowest aspect of your animal nature, which is your appetite for sex and your appetite for food. The two hardest things for a human being to discipline. most human beings. I believe, and from my experience, it's easier for women to discipline their sex drive than men. But for men, it's definitely the two hardest, is appetite for food and appetite for sex. If you embark on a long water fast, you're going to face those things off because already you're deciding not to, not to do this. On top of that, you're going to get the healing benefits of cleaning your body. When you fast, there's nothing more, there's nothing more cleansing for your body than a water fast. But on top of all of that, you're going to go on a long journey and indeed you do start to stimulate your pineal and with it the additional production of melatonin and with it, which is not proven by science, but I can tell you now that you do get visions when you do long water fasts. And with it, I will then say the stimulation of DMT, which is very similar in its structure to melatonin. 
they did a study on rats where they said they were finding DMT in the pineal, but there's still a controversy about it because it's hard to, to go inside the middle of a human's brain when, when it's operating and see what's happening. There's still discussions that DMT is used inside the body during your rapid eye movement when you're sleeping in REM sleep. But again, it's up in the air. Nobody's quite sure. But I can tell you that you have experiences without any shadow of a doubt that sound I've had psychedelics have experiences on long water fast that are more digestible and manageable and memorable when you're long water fasting because you've got full control over yourself. Not only that, but because you're fasting and you're using temperance, you're also purging your subconscious slowly of the problems that you face. And when you're fasting, you're drawing closer to a lighter state of being and a lighter body. And you can't help but purge yourself of the dark parts of your subconscious where light has not been shone for a while. And so when the time is right, God stimulates you with your pineal. You get synchronicities, you get visions, and it can even come in the form of dreams, prophetic dreams as we hear. And thus, water fasting is a prolonged way to do it and you're still activating the same thing within yourself. You're just not taking the shortcut. You're taking your gloves off and you're saying, okay, bring it on, let's do it. I'm going to discipline and I'm going to conquer my subconscious, but I'm not going to do it in a fighting way. I'm going to do it in a relaxed, in a loving way and find a great union with inside myself and your mind-body connection becomes so profound, it's unbelievable. And fasting makes more sense because of that, because you get the discipline and you still get what you need from psychedelics. Most people, however, don't want to fast because it's more difficult, so they'll turn to the psychedelics. And I'm not saying that they're wrong either way, but my personal experience is that fasting has more benefits. Now, there are other ways. There's shamanic breathing practices, Tibetan breathing practices, so on and so forth, which are also said to stimulate those hormones as well from your pituitary pineal, <clears throat> your serotonin, your DMT, your adrenaline. All of these things rising up inside your body. Adrenaline's not from the same place, but I'm just combining them. And these can this can allow you to have visions too. And a modern day, very clean, simple teacher of that is Wim Hof. Wim Hof is teaching a breathing technique, which is ultimately a shamanic breathing stance, where you get yourself into a thoughtless state by using heavy oxygenation and rapid breath movements. And then you can have visions. And most people have visions from these breathing techniques that Wim Hof teaches, otherwise known as the Iceman. But these techniques exist in many different cultures, minus the ice situation, which he's spoken about and used a lot. So all you're doing is looking to stimulate your pineal with psychedelics because you're looking to get the DMT. And the DMT always comes because if you reach for the promised land flowing with milk and honey, milk is serotonin, honey is DMT. If you look around in every religion, the Buddha often has a pineal, uh, a pineal shaped, like a pine cone shaped head. Uh, Krishna has the same thing going on. The Vatican has the same thing. The Pope, the, the staff that the Pope carries has the pine cone. The largest statue in the Vatican is a pine cone. Uh, you've got things like Dionysus carried a staff with a pine cone that used to drip with honey, representing the DMT. You've got the story of Samson defeating the lion, which is basically us overcoming and wrestling our lower nature, so as we can, in the silence, by taking no thought, as Jesus said, raise up through our energies and sit there in a thoughtless state, just as the Coptic saints do by using uh, the Coptic monks, the Desert Fathers do by using the Jesus prayer. And when we raise up, into that space, then we can activate our pineal and we get that, that honey, that DMT that allows us to have different visions with God. You don't have to have visions though. It's more about continual discipline over your lower self. And the Samson uh, overcomes the lion. He looks inside the lion and there is a beehive filled with honey because once you've destroyed the beast, as it were, once you've sacrificed your five senses, just as Jesus was wounded on the five, why five times on the cross, just as Buddha had to do so under the Bodhi tree and just as uh, has to happen inside the, the Hindu faith with the yogis and with inside Kriya, etc. 
And just as David had to take five stones, his five senses, and strike the giant Goliath between the eyes and hit him in the pineal gland because his five senses were dead, he raised up to the pineal, slaying the egoic giant. As all of those things happen, you do the same thing as what you do with psychedelics. But the long journey, I feel, is better because you find the discipline whilst you're on the journey. When you come down from psychedelics, you might not necessarily automatically have the discipline you need, but you might. Some people say they do. So I would say they definitely have a space inside things, potentially. And there's nothing wrong with aiming for a thoughtless state. As I say, all religions have this included inside them, especially those who truly seek deeply, like the monks of each religion. And if you want to use psychedelics to do that, I would argue the best way for you to do it is to embark upon some fasting uh, or use breathing techniques, etc. And that would be the best way to take no thought because it really does allow you to discipline and sever your thoughts. And then from there you can have dreams and things. I only built the children's village because I had a dream about it. It's the only reason I did it. I didn't have a solution to the problem, dreamed of the solution. Great, thank you God. God gave me the solution in a dream. So. So all you're aiming to do is stimulate that pineal gland and you can do it in many different ways and every religion knows about it. And as it says in Christianity, it's the best example I've seen God face to face. I call that place pineal. Move over to the Hindu faith, it's very obvious because they place this sacred dot on their heads which represents the same thing. But in the battle between psychedelics and fasting, I'd go for fasting every time. I really would. But inside our modern world, I see the healing that psychedelics seem to be bringing to some people, but it's not about tripping out. It's not about doing it for recreation. It would be about doing it with a trained professional to find what you need to find, which is a direct experience with God. That, as the Coptic Desert Fathers said, they chant the Jesus prayer repetitively so as they can have a direct experience with God beyond words, beyond scripture, beyond linear thinking ultimately is what they're getting at but beyond labels beyond images they just want an experience of themselves because reality is not linear but the mind is weak it is linear so we've got to get that linear thing out of the way if we truly want a direct experience with god and if you get that direct experience with god then you become powerful because then you know you've got god on your shoulder and when you know you've got god on your shoulder you're not afraid you don't doubt and you have absolute faith that whatever you proceed with, God will back you up with it. Because you know God's there. You don't have faith that God is there. You have faith that God's going to back you up. Because you know he's there. And that's the benefit of having a direct experience of God. Be it via fasting, psychedelics, uh, breathing, distance exercise. I've experienced it as well. Or whatever other way uh, that you might have experienced God. If you have other ways, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. So. Okay, that's all. Hopefully my next video will come to you from the much more beautiful setting of Tanzania and my home rather than in a hotel room in Hamburg. God bless guys. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as it really helps us to grow the channel and with it help more children here in Tanzania. Also, don't forget you can support our work by sharing with children in crisis here. Be it sharing for a particular need or even sharing one-on-one -on -one support for education, housing, food and medical care. It can be done for as little as the cost of a cup of coffee a week back in the West after all. Just visit www.sharetanzania.co.uk to find out more. Lastly, remember you can also support us via Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash feathers tail and help keep us here in Tanzania to continue our work. The links for the website and for the Patreon are in the description box of this video. Love and light guys, see you soon.